Hey guys, how's everyone doing today? It's time for another Fallout Hobbies live stream. We're going to do some fun stuff today, something a little more fantasy oriented than what we normally do. As always, Jules is here. Hey, what's up guys? So if you have any questions, comments, she'll be checking them on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube because we're streaming to all three right now. Today what we're going to do is I'm going to be working with some Turbo Dork paints because Turbo Dork is awesome and I love these color shifting paints. There's a couple different companies that make them right now. They're very, very popular and I really do enjoy the Turbo Dork ones a lot. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using one of the new stencils that I make, the Infantry Dragon Scales on this, uh, uh, I don't know, Deepkin flying shark creature to create kind of like a cool shimmering uh, scale effect. So with that being said, I'm going to get into it. There's a little bit of pre-prep work before we get to the stencil. This is a, another guy I was experimenting on. Um, I don't know how well this is going to register on camera, but this is using the, uh, which one did this use? I believed I was using Curacao and 3D Glasses. Yeah, those are the two colors I was using, Curacao and 3D Glasses. On this guy, um, Curacao more on the body and then 3D Glasses along the, the fin things here and uh, it creates a really cool effect. Um, I'm going to try to move it around a little bit to see if you can see that shimmer on the camera but it creates a, a really a really neat effect there and uh, especially for something that's mystical, magical or you know exotic alien materials this type of color shifting paint is is perfect for that stuff. So that's what I'm going to do here. One of the things with color shifting paint is it's, uh, it's very translucent and it kind of builds up in layers. So, and it also works best on dark surfaces. If you apply it to light surfaces, you'll see a little bit of shimmer. But when you apply it to dark surfaces, you'll see a whole hell of a lot more. When I base coated this guy, the underside of him is pretty light, but the, the back and down here and the fins, I sprayed with a darker blue before I applied the color shifting paint. And that's how come you can really see like the definition around here and here. So I have to start work on the shark. So before I even get into the turbo dark paints, I'm going to start laying a couple colors down. And if you look at regular sharks, you know, non-magical, non-flying elven sharks, <laughs> <laughs> a regular, you know, standard, you know, standard uh, earth shark, they are usually lighter on the underside here and then darker on the top side. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to airbrush some light gray down here on the undersides of the fins, and then I'm going to airbrush... Uh, a good base color to start with, I think I'm going to do Incubi Darkness to get like a real nice dark uh, bluish green color on the upper areas. And from there we'll be able to apply the color shifting paint once there's a nice dark area for the contrast to, to contrast with the paint. So let me start that. First of all, I do have to mention... I built this model a while ago and I kind of didn't have the intention of airbrushing it at the time. So there's a couple pieces that I would not have put on if I had known otherwise. In fact, I might see if I could take this whole harness thing off. Let me just see real quick if I could pop that off. Or it's only held on in one spot. Okay, that was easy. Uh, one slice and it's off. Not bad. 
the reason I did that is because the uh, this harness here for the uh, the gunner, he, I think he's got like a basically a bolt thrower, um, overlaps this fin. And I really want to make sure that I can get the stencil and everything on the spin perfectly. So I'll be able to reapply that afterwards. It's not a big deal. Sometimes you have to modify the models before you can really get a good paint job on them. I prefer to build in sub-assemblies so that I can airbrush everything nicely before I put it all together. Right, the airbrush is just getting fired up here. Make sure it's nice and cleaned out. As always, I like to put black paper down, especially with a project like this, because I can test out um, the colors on the black paper before I apply it to a dark surface. Kind of helps gauge things a little bit. Also keeps my cutting board really clean, so I don't get paint all over it. Alright. I'm going to use some deep pin flesh for the uh, underside. Now, this is a little solid here. Hold on, I gotta mix this up. It's been sitting sideways in a box for a couple months. Okay. Don't need a ton of it. I'm just really just applying a little bit just to the underside of the shark. I didn't want to use a neutral gray. I wanted to use something that was a little bit uh, Warmer, I guess, would be the color, the word I'm looking for. Just making sure to get the thin area, the fleshy areas. Really doesn't matter about the armor because I'm going to be painting that separately anyway. So in other good news, Jules and I are going to be getting married next week. That's fun. By a prison rabbi. By a prison rabbi. No one else was available during COVID. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just going to go with it and accept the mystery at this point. Yes, it's just life is weird. It's okay. He's a nice guy. All right, so that's kind of the... Uh, warmish color that's going to go under there that's going to contrast well with when we do the dark colors that only needs a minute to dry it's not a heavy coat any questions comments so far not so far i've been keeping an eye on it though a lot of people watching just uh cool just if you have anymore. questions just comment we will respond to them in real time Airbrush just knocked something over here. The only thing I don't like about airbrushes is the cord. Seriously, it always gets in my way somehow. But thanks, Amory. They're just saying congrats. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So here, I am applying. See, I want to keep that separation right there. I want to make it look like 
there's a demarcation line. Ken Horton is asking, do sharks have scales? Uh, no, but this is a magical shark and it's an elven shark and it also flies. So you know what? It's going to have scales. It's going to have scales. There was one time one guy got into a really technical tiff with me online because a long time ago I made a Nurgle plague marine with a flamethrower but I painted the flamethrower green like the flame green and for some reason this guy just couldn't wrap it in his head how a green flame but it's like... plague yeah but he was like there's no chemical reaction that can create a green fire I'm like they're walking zombies in the 41st millennium made from genetically engineered space marines that entered into an alternate dimension and became mutated I'm like, green fire is the least improbable thing <laughs> about them. <laughs> I, uh, I got to say, as a parent, plague can come in many, many colors. It can be green. It can be yellow. It can be, you don't even want to know, depending on what they ate, it can be freaking purple. Right. You can have anything come out, you know? Yes, you can. Ken goes, ah, magical scales. Perfect. Magic. It's all magic. And John is Can saying... Can you ride a shark? No. <laughs> the shark also has, like, glowing runes on the side of its jaw. So I'm just going to, you know, just... I'm going to follow what I always follow with models is I'm going to try to make it look cool. That's pretty much it. If it looks cool, I'm happy with it. And John is saying, no, they have skin. Yes, I know they have skin. And, and Amory is saying, barium burns green. Very oh, true. Well, there we go. So it was a barium-based flamethrower, which is probably inefficient, but whatever. It looks cool. I think I'm running out of paint here. Uh, Gilbert Mondragon says, good afternoon. What's up, Gil? All right, once we get this, this base color down, then we'll be able to get into the color shift paints. Derek on Facebook is saying uh, sharks have very small teeth, like scales called, I'm going to slaughter this, placoid scales. This is why when you touch a shark, you pet it from head to tail. Hmm. Oh, because if you petted it the reverse way, it would be grating? Yeah, I would imagine so. Although I'm, I'm not going to pet a shark. Mm -mm. I pet a shark. I've pet sharks before in aquariums. I one time saw this like little five year old kid. His mom wasn't looking and he just grabbed like a whole tiger shark right out of the tank. Just like just like grabbed it. A sand shark, I mean, not a tiger shark. One of the little guys just literally picked up the whole shark. He's like, look at this. He's like holding the shark in midair. People were like, oh my God, put the shark down. It's like a five-year-old kid. Brave freaking kid. Yeah, he had no idea. I mean, it was like one of those petting areas, you know, in the aquarium. But it was just funny. I was like, oh my God, this kid just literally picked up a shark. <laughs> I was um, snorkeling one time in the Cayman Islands off the shore. 
and there used to be an area that they called like Stingray City because all of the stingrays had become like so domesticated from the tourists feeding them and stuff. They just came right up to you. Yeah, but you can't actually wear your fins, uh, your flippers while you're like snorkeling because you might actually, you know, accidentally hit one of them. But yeah, I could feed them and they're kind of like feeding like a, it's like a vacuum cleaning kind of suction on your hand. No one wants to get Steve Irwin. You don't want to aggravate the stingrays by accident. One side looks good. Let's see how this side's looking now that things are drying up a little bit. Still needs a little bit more dry on it. You know, stingrays and sharks are related. I did not. Ken Horton says he wants to paint a shark now. Sharks are fun. This is from the Deepkin box set that came out like last year, or maybe the year before that. I got like about 75% done painting all the infantry on there, but I still need to paint all the sharks and stuff. Angela Leach says she just picked up an Alapex and she has a bunch of the color shift paints, so this ought to be really interesting. Yes. I hope so. Otherwise, it's going to be a really boring video. <laughs> <laughs> we always have fun. Thursdays are, are like one of my favorite days. I love taking a break and just, you know. So far, most of our videos have been good. There was that one time it was a colossal disaster. Well, that was when we like first started like multi-streaming across. No, 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 not that day. Oh. That day was a little bit of a disaster too. Okay, so there was two times there was a disaster. <laughs> no, the other time was, remember when I was uh, working on that one Gundam model and I was using the camouflage stencil, but like the paint wouldn't dry quick enough, number one, and then the the color that I wanted to use was like dried out, and then like something else didn't work, and then my airbrush got clogged like irreparably to the point where I had to stop airbrushing. I think that was a Monday video. That was definitely a Monday video of that. That video was a complete disaster. All right, while I'm waiting for the um, Thank You by Darkness top layer to dry, I'm going to kind of sort out the colors that I'm going to use. So I do want to give the overall shark um, a glisten, but I'm going to make the, uh, the scales, you know, a slightly different color. Excuse me. So I have a couple of different options here. Um, I bought a ton of Turbo Dork colors. Actually, not bought. They were kind enough to send me a bunch of samples, so I do have to thank them for that. That was about a year ago. And uh, I've been using them here and there for different projects, so I try to plug them when I can. Um, let's see. Angela this. on Facebook says she had a blast painting her eels without color shift, but she definitely got the color shift paints primarily for her deepkin. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, what's, where's that box with the other ones? So this was like, uh, one of the Tide casters. I was using some of the, I think I was using the Carousel, Carousel color on the cloak here, and it was creating a really nice shimmer effect. This figure is nowhere near done. And then the, uh, guy that actually, I was doing the same thing for the guy that, rides this uh, creature, I forgot what it's called, but I was using the color shift paints on his cloak as well, which I thought turned out pretty cool. It's got some nice shifting there. And uh, this was a shark that I had gotten halfway through before I had the idea to airbrush the stencil. So I'm gonna repaint this guy. But this guy was similar to what I'm doing here. So I painted like a gray under area, and then I painted a dark blue upper area. And then I believed I used this color Electrum 
It was either Electrum or Seafood. They're both very similar, very similar uh, shifters here. Might have been Seafood. Um, and that created this nice, like, glistening effect all over the skin, which if you're going to be a stickler for detail is more accurate to a shark because sharks don't have scales. But I'm trying to make this guy look cool, so whatever. <laughs> But uh, I, I, I was really happy with the way these color shift paints were working here. So I'm going to kind of be replicating that a little bit down here. How close are we to dry? Almost there. All right. So the first color I'm going to paint, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with a coat of seafood overall on this guy and then when I get down to the stencil work I'll use something a little bit brighter. Ken wants to know how much does using a clear coat affect the color shift? You don't really need to use a clear coat. The color shift is kind of a clear coat in itself because um, it's basically a bunch of different types of metallic pigments that are floating in um, gloss varnish more or less so when you apply it it kind of seals everything in already um, if you were to use a clear coat I would suggest using gloss because I'm pretty sure a matte clear coat would neutralize all the glittering sparkling effect of it and it would just kind of look flat but if you don't have to use a clear coat don't use a clear coat yeah. so I think I'm going to go with Seafood and then something a little bit brighter. I think I'm going to use Kurosal. Kurosal. Which is like the blue stuff that they uh, put in tropical drinks to make them all tropical looking. Gail says sci fi sharks. Oh, my comment got cut off. He says he would paint them. Sci fi sharks, yes. All right. One thing with airbrushing with turbo dork paints um, or any color shifting paints is they are thick. You want to make sure that they're properly shook up, number one. Um, so take your time to really make them mixed. Number two, they will dry fast in the airbrush. So you want to keep cleaning your airbrush regularly. Otherwise, you're going to get jams with them. So I'm just taking a minute to really shake this one up over here. And Jim David is waving over in the watch party in our customer creations group. Hey, what's up? Hey, Jim. All right. I put a little bit of the seafood in here, which is kind of like a... It's like a blue to green, more of a subtle transition. There we go. I don't really think you can brush paint the color shifters. Um, just because I don't think the pigment evenly distributes with it. Ken over on our Facebook page um, wants to know if you use a flow improver when spraying them. And Angela is asking, how much do you recommend thinning the color shift paints for your airbrush? I didn't thin it at all. Well, that's a lie. I maybe put like a drop of water for every couple drops of um, the paint. I prefer to kind of run it more like full saturation because that way you get a higher concentration of like the the sparkly pigments. You can thin it out, of course, and then if you thin it out, just maybe do two coats instead of one coat with the color shift paint so you get a more even application. Sim See, Simon C. Day also in our watch party saying keep up the amazing work and is sending love from the UK. Oh, thanks man. See here is one coat. That's one coat of the seafood on top of um, Incubi Darkness, which is, you know, a pretty dark bluish green color. So I was trying to complement it, you know, there. So that's one coat. So that's, uh, that looks pretty cool, but I'm going to let that dry and then start doing the stenciling process. 
In the meantime, I'm cleaning out my airbrush because, um, like I said, this color, the color shift paint is pretty thick and you don't want it to jam up the airbrush. So you got to keep cleaning on a regular basis. It's also sneaky because it's very translucent. So you might think your airbrush is clean, but it's not. So give it an extra go. You know what I'm saying? All right, I got a couple of the dragon scale stencil thingies ready to go. I'm just gonna give the this uh, another minute to dry. I might actually cut these stencils down into smaller pieces because when I'm looking at this, you know, there's a big section that's leather armor here or soft armor. So there's skin here, 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 and then a big chunk around the head and the fins. But this big chunk in the middle is not really applicable because that's going to be painted over. I'm going to go ahead and cut these stencils in half, which I know is sacrilege, but I make them so I have plenty of them. Smaller sections to make it a little easier to fit around the different parts of the shark. I hope this looks cool when it's done. We shall find out. I need to get one more panel ready. see how this feels. Okay, feels pretty dry. I think we can start application here. So I want to make sure that the scales are obviously going in the proper direction, which I believe would be with the pointy tip forward. It's the most plausible. And Ken on um Facebook page says, how does the direction of the stencil matter? Well, well yeah. That, yeah, that's kind of what I was just saying. You know, because it's a, it's a dragon scale, so it's got, it's not like a diamond or something. So you want to, you know, apply it so it looks the best for achieving the desired effect. Because otherwise they'll kind of be like upside down. Yeah don't want a space shark. I mean, a, fantasy, a flying fantasy elven shark with upside down scales now, do we? And Daramon Fitzpatrick on the Facebook page says, looks cool already. Thank you. I almost applied that backwards. There we go. So here's like the panel that's going to cover... section. Alright, and what I'm going to do here Joe Olivar uh, is saying, yes, catching the live stream again. Hello from the UK on hey. Facebook. What's going on, man? I'm going to use a piece of blue tape to kind of separate this because I'm going to paint the front section and then paint the back section separately in case I need to, you know, tweak anything or adjust something and do it over again, what have you. This under those fins there. Okay. Get that 
under there so it doesn't interfere with that head area. Almost there. Okay, I'm going to use one of my, uh, bowl. <laughs> Joe says, wait, no condiment pots this time? Thumbs down. <laughs> condiment pots. I was actually just getting them because I was going to hold the model up with them. There you go. Oh, I have a whole bag of these things. I got like a couple hundred condiment pots. I hold bits in them. See? Like this is for some Harlequin stuff I'm working on. These are some haywire blasters over here. I got tons of condiment pots. I forget why I had them. Those were like at probably my... Probably like a barbecue or something. I don't know. But I, well, probably that one time I had this clam bake and I used them for like melted butter or something. Probably. They're from the old house. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use the Curacao color. I'm going to spray over the stencils, but I'm going to give it like, I don't know, maybe two or three coats. I really want to build it up so that there's a bit of a contrast with it. Let me get in here and let me open this bottle up and make sure it's really properly stirred up in here. These have been sitting for a few months, so I want to make sure they're good to go. Okay, this is last chance. Do I want to do carousel or absinthe? I want to do carousel because I wanted a little bluer, bluer color. Jayhan on Facebook goes, yes, condiment pots are the best. Mm. Moment of truth. Well, not just yet. Moment of truth when I peel the stencils. Keep in mind, I've never done this before. So I have no idea how this is going to turn out. So it's going to be just as much of a surprise for you as it is for me. In my head, I think it's going to work out. That's Arme all I got. Arminio in our uh, watch party is asking, Hi again, was meaning to ask previously regarding uh, airbrushing Citadel paints. What ratio do you usually thin them down to? I go 50-50 and they still clog my airbrush. Mm, they're always going to clog your airbrush no matter what. I mean, and Citadel paints vary from type to type. I mean, base the base colors need a little bit more thinning than the layer colors. Um... I don't really have a formula per se, I just kind of wing it. I just kind of thin it down to what seems to work best for the particular color. And Ken on our Facebook page is saying, should you be talking about eating sea creatures in front of the shark? Seems awfully rude. <laughs> well, the shark eats sea creatures too. And to answer your question, Angela, uh, yes, the stencils are reusable uh, with care. They're made out of um, low-tack vinyl. Um, when the stickiness does wear off, you can even use, like, uh, masking or painter's tape to hold it on. As long as you don't just, like, tear it off of the model, uh, you can get a lot of uses out of them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing a couple applications with this blue. It's not going to be a high contrast from the seafood, but hopefully it'll be enough of a contrast to create a little bit of a pattern going through it. So I'm just uh, taking my time and letting it dry a little bit in between layers and applying a couple more layers. The more layers you apply, the higher the concentration of the metallic pigment in there. Angela is saying thanks, and she's going to have to pick some up. Awesome. Hey, 
Thanks, Angela. All right. Let's let this dry for a minute, and then maybe I'll blast one more. One more layer. Like I said, I've never done this before, so I have no idea if it's going to work or not. I hope it works, but I have no idea. It could look like garbage, so we'll see. All right, I think that's enough for this one. I'm going to let it dry for a few minutes before I peel the stencil so I don't smudge anything. This Turbo Dork stuff does dry pretty quick, too. So that's an advantage. feeling this is going to look really cool. All right, guys, moment of truth. <sighs> I am very happy with how this worked out. Look at that. That's fun. What do you think? Very cool. I like it. I dig. It's actually higher contrast than I thought it would be. I might need to blast like another layer of seafood or something to kind of dial it down. But this is a uh, this is a disco party shark right now. Wow. There we go. All right. That looks cool. So I'm going to do the back tail now. Same color. Let me just reapply these stencils. And I'll put the big one across the fin here. You know, hold on a second. I need to modify this one so I can get a clean. And Taramond is saying, looks great. Good job. Thank you. should cover it. There we go. Okay. All right, so after I'm done painting these scales here, which only take a few minutes, then I'm going to um, just start doing a little bit of blending and whatnot. because I didn't think the scales would be as high contrast as they are. But I don't want to kill all the contrast. I just want to kind of blend things in a little bit more. So we'll be able to do that in a moment. Alex Lewis on the Facebook page says, oh, that's going to look lovely. Thank you. I hope so. Oh, uh, thanks for letting me know that, Angela. Let me hop over to our Shopify store, and I will take care of that for you. What's happening? Uh, apparently, it's out of stock. 
Oh, you should be able to buy it even when it's out of stock. Hmm. <laughs> but let's check the settings in the store. Uh, none of the airbrush stencils are ever actually out of stock. We cut airbrush stencils every day. so Just Shopify on the back end, you have to put a number. You have to put a quantity <laughs> in Shopify. There's no way to just, you know, make it like infinite quantity. So I don't know what to do about that. Yeah, we're literally cutting stencils every day. So even if something's out of stock, you can still order it because it'll be back in stock the next day. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's actually kind of cute. Ken says you should set the quantity to, to 40K. I don't think we can. <laughs> I don't know if it will let us. I don't think it will let us. <laughs> that would be funny, though. And uh, we are, Alex, we're spraying them airbrush. We're not stifling them. We're not hairbrushing at all. No. All right, I'm going to let that dry and hit it one more time because I remember I hit the front three times. So. Alex also wants to know if you ever tried using like a large makeup brush. Um, y you can. I mean, things like that look pretty cool if you're doing uh, like our vehicle stencils, if you're trying to use them on um, like a tank and create, you know, uh, squad markings on the doors of tanks. Uh, big brushes like that actually work pretty well for creating like a weathered effect on the stencils. But um, I'm sure you can. I mean, they're just, I, they're, they're stencils, you know? They block paint. So however you paint, that's how they block it. You can use spray paint cans. You can use brushes. Um, I prefer airbrush. They're mainly sold as airbrush stencils. But I've seen people do all sorts of different things with them. I've seen people airbrush them um, and then peel the airbrush stencil and then apply even more details by hand afterwards once the pattern is laid. That looks pretty cool. I actually saw a video of a person on a Facebook forum just yesterday using these color shift paints but on a um, on a Harlequin flyer like what we did in last week's video and it actually looked really awesome because the diamonds were all listening and whatnot, which totally makes me want to repaint these that way too now. I just did those last week. What do you know? I can actually set it to 40,000. You can? Yeah. That's funny. That's awesome. I didn't think we could go that high with the store quantities on the website. Okay. Peel those. These stencils are still very usable, so you can put them back on the backer sheet, and I'll use them for the next shark, the next aloe packs. All right, so that looks pretty cool. Um, I'm going to do a little blending and stuff now with them. And then I'm going to paint the armor sections just so that they really isolate where the thin area is. Uh, not pins, where the skin areas are, that's what I meant to say. Alright, I'm just going to do one layer of seafood. Seafood color, the greenish color that was the base color. Just to kind of even it out a little bit. Uh, 
Uh, Daniel Caves asking if we have anybody stocking our stuff in the UK. No, but if no. you know any hobby stores, uh, go in and say, hey, you know, these Fallout Hobbies people are awesome and you should carry their stuff because we are open to wholesale and we know you guys uh, have to pay a lot in duties, so... Yeah, we've been, uh, you know, we've been reaching out to different stores across the globe, and we have retailers in uh, like six different countries now carrying our stuff. But uh, yeah, if you have a hobby store that wants to sell our stuff, have them contact us. We'll give them a wholesale account and ship to them. Especially the UK. You guys get killed with import taxes. I am sorry. <laughs> I don't know why your country has such higher import duties than any other country, but it's pretty brutal. All right, I am happy with the way these are looking. I'm going to break out just a little bit of a flat color uh, just so I can kind of mask out. I'll just use Incubi Darkness again for the sake of this video. Just so I can mask out where the um, uh, soft armor is. That's what I was trying to say. Sorry. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, um, thanks for subscribing on YouTube, too. We also uh, have a Twitch channel. We just started doing, we were doing the Facebook live streams for a long time, but we just started doing the multi-streaming um, every week. For like the last three weeks, we usually try and um, do a new video every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, Thursday is going to be kind of our like standard video day. Thanks for checking in, Ken. He has to run. And Daniel Thanks, Cave says the tax man never lets us <laughs> have nice things. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I mean that can be that's true with pretty much any country, but. I'm just kind of masking off the armor areas with the solid color here so you guys will be able to see where the where the fin uh, where the skin area is as opposed to the soft armor. Uh, Alex Lewis is saying, Ron, I don't know if you've seen it, but I put up the finished large Dupari vehicle, the one based on the Tantalus that he used a mesh stencil on final colors and the big reveal was yesterday was a little surprised on it as had kept half the project in the dark uh, did, uh where did he post that mm -hmm. usually if you uh if you tag us uh hashtag fallout hobbies um i do try and share projects that you guys have finished um using our stencils and stuff so if it was in the customer creations i don't know if i checked that yesterday but if it was on another page i might not have seen it yet i do try to keep my eyes on everything though and uh joe says gotta go guys keep up the great work thank you joe Yeah, this video is going to be coming to a close pretty soon anyway, but uh, I just wanted to finish outlining the soft armor here.
I'll just do it on one side so everyone can just kind of see. Get these thin straps here. You know, now that I think about it, I'm actually kind of surprised that I haven't seen anyone from the Carcharodon's Space Sharks group do a conversion with these Allopexes. Like, have a bunch of Space Marines flying some. Alex is saying, in 40k for grown-ups, the Ducari group in 40k converters and also... The 40k touring group and Jesus. more. Okay, sorry, man. I <laughs> guess I didn't see it yet. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I, I will take a look. To be fair, yesterday um, he was stuck watching kids while I was wedding dress shopping. It was quite interesting. You you actually have to really know what you want to wear during COVID because apparently you can only try on up to five dresses, which was actually really reassuring because they steam and sanitize after every customer in between, which is kind of nice. All right. Yes, it is. It is very nice indeed. Here we go. So I outlined the soft armor on this one side so you guys could see the... Uh, detail a little bit better, but I am pretty happy with the way that this uh, dragon scale stencil turned out. Infantry dragon scale, I should re remind, because um, it created like a nice little skin effect. Now this would also be pretty awesome to use on other creatures, anything kind of reptilian or fish-like. Uh, you could use it on wings, uh, like demon wings, something like that would be pretty cool too. Or even if you're doing, like, say, uh, a reptilian-themed space marine army, something like Alpha Legion or uh, Salamanders, you could use this type of pattern on their armor for the smaller vehicles. It would look pretty cool. So anyway, uh, thanks, guys, for watching. And I had a lot of fun with this one, and I was happy this one actually worked out because I had no idea if it was going to or not when I started. And we will see you guys next Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern, and I'll be doing something different then. So come check us out again. All right, everyone. Have a good one.